Good evening, everyone, or oh, welcome to day 11 of my 30 days challenge. A challenge and a call for everyone to join in in the effort to, to provide a relief effort for Hurricane Harry. So um, for those of you that have been following me from day one, Thank you. Today is day 11. I'm really excited and it's going by fast and I'm enjoying every bit of it. Today I have something a little bit unique for you. And what I'm going to talk about is how to cope or deal with losses after hurricane disasters. All right. And um, the reason, I'm, you know, what I'm going to put out tonight is just part of the recovery process because now, uh, we cannot say we want to recover or rebuild the state of Houston uh, or the city of Houston, Texas, without basically finding ways to rebuild the people's lives because that's part of the relief effort. You know, relief effort is not just to rebuild the uh, properties and the infrastructure of the state. The people has to be rebuilt itself, both internally and externally, mentally and physically. So... Today, I'm just going to focus on how to deal or cope, how, whatever term you want to use, with losses uh, after hurricane disasters. And these, uh, these, uh, this episode tonight is going to apply as the hurricane seasons continue uh, throughout this year, 2017. All right. So, let me get started. All right. First... I want to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, a psychologist. And I'm not a grief counselor. But everything I'm going to put out today is based on my own perspectives, my own uh, research, and also uh, my own opinion. So, and I hope it helps. You know, I hope it helps somebody out there. And if you can please share this video tonight, because I'm going to talk a lot about. Uh, grieving process because there's a, a different form of grieving that's actually gonna come come forth from this hurricane season uh, you know as it goes forward all right hundreds of thousands of people uh, are experiencing one or two form you know one form of losses or the other that's the fact all right i'm not just talking about um Losses of material things. I'm talking about losses of uh, emotion. You know, emotional losses. I'm talking about. I'm talking about losses of self-esteem. I'm talking about losses of pride, because take if a, uh, um, um, a family man with a with a big house, maybe a single family house. You know, and, and five. You know, or five or, or five family. And then he came home one day and he realized that everything that he has labeled for has been, you know, just been washed away by Oregon Harvey. First, the first thing that's going to hit that kind of person is, well, okay, how am I going to protect for my family? And somebody that have never been in a situation as, that is reduced to going to a shelter, sleeping on the cot before, that is, that is one thing. The, you know that that is a big kick on a lot of people self pride so when talking about losses tonight i just don't want to look uh, i don't want you to look at just uh the losses of financial security or losses of properties or losses of pets or losses of loved ones all these are important as well so when i'm talking about losses all these are like basically all part of it all together losses of career and losses of relationship all this is going to happen as a result of these hurricanes. Okay, but the question is, how can we help these people deal with it? Or how do they need to start dealing with it? Yeah, material thing is good, you know, care packages is good. But rebuilding people has to start with them. Please understand, it has to start with them. So how can we help rebuild, you know, rebuild and recover from all those losses that is what i want to focus on tonight all right um one thing i want i want i want to start with is 
griefing for loss is okay. A lot of people see griefing for loss as a as a bad thing, as a as a uh, as a bad thing or something that needs to be avoided. No, griefing for loss is okay, and it's one of the is not the number one key to the healing process. If you don't grieve, you cannot heal because you don't know what you you know what you're gonna be getting healed from. So it's a process, and it takes time. Of course, the times vary from one person to the other, but all these people that are sitting at the shelters right now, or some people that are basically about to experience another hurricane, they're going to need this healing process, this grieving process, in order for them to basically recover or cope with the losses that they, they are currently facing or they are, they're going to face in the near future. All right. So how can we really cope for loss? All right. First, we have to remember that rebu you know, grieving is a rebuilding process. Is a rebuilding process. And the question is, what are we rebuilding? We're rebuilding our faith in God. We're rebuilding our, our family. We're rebuilding our sense of pride, self-esteem. We are rebuilding our community. We are rebuilding our family. We are rebuilding our security. We are rebuilding um, so many things. The list goes on and on. So, uh, you know, our faith. Okay, let, let me mention that. We are rebuilding our faith and we are rebuilding our financial security. So, rebuilding all together uh, is not all about property and infrastructure. And another thing is that I know that Houston, Texas, or everywhere that Oregon has hit in the last uh, few weeks will never be the same. It's either going to be better than it was before the hurricane, or it's going to be worse than it was before the hurricane. But the healing process, the healing planning, the healing strategy happens from individual person. And the outcome of the healing process or the rebuilding, you know, is based on how the healing process, the planning of the healing process, the strategies that has come up, and uh, the energy, the faith, they the zeal to go on and actually rebuild for a better future. So, okay. I, you know, I took the time and judge up some notes, you know, some, you know, via research, some just thinking about it, and some using biblical concepts. So I'm going to just put everything together, and I know um, we are all resilient in our own way. This is not a resilient speech, but I know there's a form of resilience in each and every one of us. It, sometimes it takes somebody else to pull it out. Sometimes it takes the act of God to pull it out in us. But we all have a you know some form of resilience that we can actually use during a, a disaster period to actually rebuild ourselves and make ourselves better than we were before, and actually help us get through the disaster process, the griefing process. All right, so um, so let me start with uh, another aspect of the grieving process. In order for us to recover, uh, you know, now I'm talking to people at the shelter. In order for you to properly recover and go through the griefing process safely, first, you have to admit the loss. Take the time, you know, take a sheet of paper and just face the fact and write down what you consider a loss. Like I said, it is a process. It's not a magic wand, you know, that's going to make everything just snap and go away. No, it is going to be there, and the process takes a long time. That is the fact. So the first step to recover is to admit the fact that, yes, there is a loss, and then account for it and say, okay, what is the law? What is the extent of the loss I'm facing here? And the second thing that you need to look out for is to embrace the good because in the midst of all disasters in the midst of all losses there are good things 
that we can actually look for or look or see. The question is, are we actually looking for the good? So I'm encouraging everyone today, everyone listening to me, or everyone that will be viewing this video that the second thing you need to do is embrace the good. Look around you. Do you have your children? Do you have your husband? Do you have your pets? Do you have your life and your health? If you answer yes to all these questions that I just asked you, then guess what? You have what you need to rebuild, to start the rebuilding process. And because there are uh, thousands of people that cannot answer yes to all these questions. And for those that cannot answer yes to all these questions that I just asked, and but can only answer yes to few, I want you to basically embrace that as well. Because, you know, in your case, it's just small compared to others, but you still have something that you can build on. The question is, are you willing to go through the rebuilding process? Disaster has come. That's the fact. And disaster, in few years from now, will just be another memory of bad things that happen. But how you recover from this disaster is, is based on you and your zeal to recover and your, or your determination to make a better life for your, you and your family. All right. I want you to remember that during these times of grieving, uh, grieving and or during this time of rebuilding, I'm going to use those two words interchangeably. You know, I'm talking about the same thing. There is this time of planning to reshape your future. Remember, you cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. The Bible let us know that one, one person can chase a thousand, but two can put what? Can put 10,000 to fly. So that means two ads are better than one. It is okay to seek help. It is okay to ask for support. You know, all you know, since I started this uh, 30 days challenge, I have done tremendous research and I have seen, you know, I think I've seen so much that I was, you know, I'm like up to here overwhelm myself. But one thing that I, you know, I'm amazed about is how people are asking for help. I went to GoFundMe and I saw a lot of GoFundMe videos out there. People asking for help because they know that in this process, you know, the best way to deal with disaster is to ask for help. Being in isolation is not going to help. It's only going to make things, things worse. So, yes, don't be afraid to ask for help. It is okay to ask for help. There are a lot of people out there that are willing to help. But if you don't ask, you don't receive. Okay. Um, next, you need to make a plan to get past the loss. You have to be willing to get past the loss. The loss is there. And like I said earlier, it's going to linger for a while. But what is your plan to get past the loss, to establish a new routine? And getting past the, of the loss is... Is you know, it's just what I uh, I mentioned. You start with what I just mentioned. Establish a new routine, or rebuild on an existing re routine if that works for you. But you have to be willing to do this in order for you to cope with the disaster that you just faced or the loss that you just faced during this disaster. And for those of you that are of faith, then I will encourage you to pray continuously. Because dealing with losses, it can be really, really depressing. Yes, that's the facts. You know, um, you know, last year I lost my father. So I know what it means to lose someone close to you. So I'm talking now about property. These are material things that can be recovered. Remember, when there's life, there's hope. So as long as this, you're still breathing, there is hope of rebuilding. 
So taxes, Houston taxes, is going to be rebuilt. It's going to go on. It's going to be, you know, be better. But the future of Houston taxes and the recovering process of Houston taxes and the recovering uh, process of all the all the people that are dispersed that are affected by these hurricanes or the future hurricane is based on their willingness to build and rebuild. Their willingness to go past it, to be better. So pray continuously, and if you cannot pray, seek help from others to pray for you. Even on LinkedIn today, I, I you know, I'm hearing soft story about um, how people are still looking for their family member in Florida. They're asking people to pray for them. So prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key, and it can do wonders as well. So pray continuously as well. That is part. That is a. That is part of the healing process, and it helps you through the grieving process. It helps you deal with your losses. Next, you need to surround yourself with uplifting things, uplifting people, uplifting images, uplifting vision of tomorrow. So that means you need to engage in healthy behavior. Anything that is destructive, you don't want it because you already went through a lot. You already have enormous losses that you have to deal with. Your family have been through a lot of losses. So engaging in healthy behavior should be your number one priority. Nothing else. Okay, I said you need people you know, because a lot of people during loss, during a time of loss, like they, they tend to isolate themselves. I said earlier at the beginning that you only make things worse. It's not going to help. So do not isolate yourself. Find someone to talk to. You don't have to know them to talk. Come on Facebook and talk. Seek help. People do listen, you know, and you'll be amazed. But they all start with you opening your mouth and asking for help. Next, you need to give yourself time to adjust. All right. If you don't give yourself time to adjust, then you're just going to boil yourself down into a depressed, depressed state of mind. You need to know it takes time and it's going to take time for you to adjust. Even even writing down all the losses sometimes, you know, and looking back at what you wrote down can be overwhelming and, un, you know, unbearable at times. But you have to know that in due times, this too shall pass. It's just for, you know, it's not going to last forever. So give yourself the self time to adjust to the loss. Time to adjust for your new strategy. It's time to adjust for the planning, for the for the communication that you actually doing up there, you know, or, or how you're seeking help. Adjust to it. Communicate your experience. Yeah. Let people know what you've been through. So if they have to go through the same thing, they can learn from your experience. Experience is key. Experience helps others. So don't be afraid to share your experience. Communicate your experience. If you need, join a support group. Some of us, especially with family that doesn't know how to cope, might need to join a support group. That's part of the communication process. So when you join a support group, it is okay because what, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna have people uh, that's gonna listen. People will be there to listen. Hello, Jason. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kyle. Chief Taylor, how are you? All right. So you, need, you can join a support group. Coping with losses is, is bearable and is tolerable if you, if you actually have people around you. Remember, you have more resilience than you think and every one of you that is watching this video or that is going through this this uh state right now the you know facing this destructive moment or how to deal with it 
you all can bounce back. You all can recover from it. But take it one day at a, at a time. All right. And, and I'm going to talk about what to avoid. When you're going through your healing process, when you're going to your rebuilding process, when you're going to a coping, you know, a coping state, you want to avoid these five things that I'm going to mention. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, spit this up. You want to avoid it. Like, you know, you want to avoid it like a plague. Run away from it. One, you want to avoid an intense and overwhelming feeling. It's going to come, but you want to avoid it. And that's going to be your part of your strategy. You know, these things are likely to come. And you create a strategy to avoid it. For example, okay, let's say you're thinking about, you're sitting down there and, you know, you just have a flashback of, oh, shit, uh, your house all covered by water. You know, your coping mechanism can be, oh, immediately snapping back out of that and basically envision a, a bigger house envisioning you know your family all together and, and you know loving states envisioning the the hell that thank god they survived that that will help you cope with that vision of destructive and make it a positive one so because if you don't avoid intense and overwhelming feeling this can lead to uh, anxiousness nervousness it can escalate your grief you know, you can become irrit uh, irritating, you know, uh, moody. Uh, and, you know, you might even, you might, you, might, you might even feel so sad that you don't even want to talk to people. So please avoid that intense and overwhelming feeling. Two, change your thought and behavior. I'll just give you an example how you can easily flush the trees because if, you know, all the all these pictures is going to flash back. We are humans. It's going to come. But well, as it come, have a cat, you know, have a uh, cat can counter image for it. That's the word I'm looking for. So have ways to destroy, you know, deflect it. Change your thought. Because if you don't change your thought, this can change your thought and behavior pattern. If you don't change it, you know, sitting down there at the shelter or being in an hotel like a, a rescue stay or anywhere, you know, that is not your home right now or a rescue center. If you don't change your, the pattern or your, your behavior pattern or the way you're thinking, it can lead, lead to overeating or undereating. It can lead to a massive uh, imbalanced emotion. It can lead to rapid uh, heartbeats. It can, it can escalate into something that you didn't have planned for. We all have family, you know, friends in, in all these areas that are being affected by, by, by hurricanes. But these are something you can actually talk to them about. Because if they know, they can better watch out for it. All right, you you know like uh, you want to avoid sensitive uh, sensitivity to the environmental factors. Meaning, you know when you are in a state of uh, of depression, for example, everything seems to be irritating. For example, siren, uh, loud noises, you know, uh, strange smells, stress. You want to avoid all this stuff. Because it can trigger something that you don't want. All right. You want to avoid a strain in your interpersonal relationship with yourself, with your family members and your coworkers or friends. All right. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be real with you because when, when we are stressed, we are human. When we are strained, sometimes we take it out on the people around us. A lot of people, a lot of spouses are going to take their frustrations out of their husband, out of their children. Avoid all this type of behavior because it only makes matters worse. Avoid isol isolations. Avoid withdrawal. Avoid, uh, 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 you know, like uh, anti-social anti 
uh, scheme or antisocial behavior. That's what I'm going to say. Avoid antisocial behavior. Even though you don't want to hear it, sometimes it's good to be around people. So, and lastly, okay, you want to avoid stress-related physical symptoms. All right. When you're sitting out there and you're thinking about your life and how, you know, all the losses you've experienced, you know, there's likeliness that if you, if you stress too much about it, you're going to have headaches. If you don't control that headaches, it's going to continue to escalate in something that you don't want. Nausea, you know, chest pain may occur, you know, uh, pre-existing medical condition can get, uh, could get worse. So you want to try and avoid all these. These are how you can actually cope and deal with the, the losses during hurricane disaster or any disaster, uh, as a matter of fact. So this is what I want to talk about tonight. You know, just giving you a, point, a few pointers on how you can actually deal with it. Yes, we, you know... Uh, None of this is going to happen overnight. I know that. And, but I believe in you. Who I need you to believe in yourself. That we can all deal with this stressful, this losses that we see. Uh, you know, even the city of Houston does suffer massive losses. But there's a way to deal with it. And I hope you learned something from what I put out tonight on dealing with uh, losses during disaster period. And please share it with anyone that you know that is going through uh, uh, a not so good time. I don't want to use the, you know, uh, any other negative uh, words. But people that are going through it right now that really need help, please share this video with them because they can gain one thing or the other on how to basically cope with their losses. Remember, your family loves you. Even the people that are not your family, they care about you. And they have his willing to listen to you talk, willing to listen to your experience, willing to listen to your frustration. It is okay. But remember, this is just temporary. This too shall pass. All right. I hope you enjoyed to, uh, uh, tonight to, uh, tonight video. Please share it. Like, like the, uh, my Facebook page. And also I'm going to have this video on YouTube before noon tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is Sunday. Yeah. Maybe before before the end of the day tomorrow. So that that's it. So that way, if you want to watch it again, it's going to be on YouTube. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. Please share this video again. I love you all. And I will see you tomorrow for day 12. Thank you. Bye-bye.